wedding planners of Reddit. Who was the worst bridezilla groomzilla that you've had to deal with? Story 1. I was my sister's maid of honor. During a peak planning time, our aunt, her godmother, passed away. I kept trying to get in touch with my sister all day that day. When I finally reached her, I explained I had been trying to speak with her all day to let her our aunt had passed away. I got blasted about how busy she is, and then she ripped into me about where I stood with my tasks. She was pretty rotten the day of the wedding, too. The best was two years later, I'm getting married, and she's screaming at me over the phone how I didn't help her, forced her to buy a dress she didn't want, and let her florist ruin her flowers. We're not close. Story 2. I sometimes work for a wedding planner at the event the day of. There was one wedding that I was working at that was humming along right on schedule. But about 45 minutes before the ceremony was supposed to begin, a bridesmaid grabbed me in a panic and told me the bride forgot her shoes. She told me that the bride absolutely needed her shoes. So I asked where they were. She told me they were about an hour away. The wedding planner talked to the bride and told her that no one would notice if she didn't wear her shoes. The bride pitched a fit and made an uncle drive and get them. It took him about 2.5 hours to get them. The whole time, we were trying to convince the bride to start the ceremony, and she refused. The worst part was that her family came from another country and didn't really speak English, so they had no idea what was going on at first. They got super restless, and some people even left. We told the bride that people were leaving, and she didn't care. She just wanted her shoes. Everything was delayed by about an hour and a half. People were pissed. By the time the reception rolled around, about 50% of the people left the venue. Story three was helping a friend plan her wedding. We literally had everything planned, had called in favors with friends to do everything at cost, and she had personally asked my mom to officiate. This was going to be gorgeous, and I did nothing without her. She was in on the entire thing as she should be. Her in-laws got involved and she started saying yes to everything they were saying without telling me. They then started asking me to ask my friends to do it all for free or give them a bigger deal than just cost. When I pushed back on the price, Suddenly, I was making her wedding all about me and being made out to be a nut job. My friend didn't even take the time to tell my mom that she had found a Catholic deacon to marry them. Mind you, she's Muslim and the groom converted from Catholicism to Islam to marry her in another ceremony, so someone lied about their faith here. I found out secondhand, four days before the wedding, I canceled everything but the caterer. That was a favor my BF had called in and decided to keep only because his buddy needed the money. She bought fake flowers and the ceremony was a train wreck. She got the aisle five wedding she paid for and I got to save money on a dress. Story four. Not a wedding planner, but I witnessed this. The bride and her mother insisted that the mom make the wedding cake. This was the wedding the week before ours at the venue we used for our reception. They included the cake as part of the package, but these folks insisted on their own. The wedding planner at the hall, who did all the planning stuff for all the weddings held there, told them that you need to include a stand in the middle of the cake for support if you are going to use a wedding cake topper. The mother insisted she knew what she was doing and that her three cakes piled on top of each other were sturdy enough to support the large figurine cake topper. FF to them setting up the reception, which we were there for in part as we had a meeting with the planner about final arrangements for our wedding. The whole time we are meeting the planner kept apologizing for having trouble focusing because she kept looking past my then fiancé and I, over at the cake, thinking it was looking off. We were wrapping up our meeting when suddenly she screams and bolts out of her chair. The topper had collapsed through the three layers of cake, then through the front, leaving the entire front of the cake a pile of crumbs with frosting. I never found out how that mess got fixed, because my fiancé and I got the hell out of there. Story 5. Not a planner, but a photographer's assistant second shooter. All of the brides and grooms I've had the pleasure of working for have been incredible. But the groomsmen and bridesmaids have been some real pieces of work. One wedding, the maid of honor wanted to control the formal portraits, told the main photographer how to do her job, freaked out at the caterers because the cake was late, even though they weren't connected to the bakery at all, told one of the other bridesmaids she should have lost weight to fit into her dress better, and was really just an all-around bad person who stressed the bride out all day long. Another maid of honor didn't write her speech beforehand because she was going to improvise, then got so trashed while getting ready and during cocktail hour that all she managed to slur was, John and Jane, I love you so much, and started sobbing. The bride was pretty upset at her irresponsibility. Groom had been married before, and his best man was his older brother who had served as best man in his previous wedding. He began his speech with, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Same occasion, different lady, which was bad enough. He ended with cheers and I'll see you all again at the next one.
Bride and groom were both understandably pissed and asked the best man to leave. Story 6. A drunk, screaming groomzilla screamed and pointed in my face while his poor bride cowered behind him because the venue ran out of Grey Goose at 11.45 p.m. The wedding ended at midnight. I filled up an empty bottle with water or served it to him and his douchey friends. Story 7. I was my sister's maid of honor, unpaid wedding planner. She was a bridezilla. Not only did I plan her wedding shower and had to put in for a super expensive gift and an all-expense weekend in NYC, I was a college student for Chisake. She also wanted a private gift from me, from her super expensive registry, where I couldn't afford a Ono Spoon. Everything had to be perfect and meticulously planned, right down to our toes, weight, how much we ate and drank. She's a micromanager by personality as it was. She also had the worst bridesmaids. So bad that only one showed up, besides me, to the bachelorette party, me and one other, and a friend, the NYC trip. That left three people paying for this nightmare, and again, I'm in college. Two had an excuse, at least. One was pregnant, one lived in California. One didn't show up because we wouldn't do what she wanted as activities. While I appreciated the suggestions, what her idea of an appropriate party, and what my sister would be comfortable with, two different things. One, I forget exactly why, but I remember thinking it was stupid. Also, the mother-in-law made things much worse. The marriage didn't even last three months. Story 8. This doesn't entirely fit the question. But my friend's wedding planner flat out refused to use the bride's handmade decorations. She hid them in a box under the guest book table. I was the bridesmaid assigned to go down from the suite and check on things while we're getting ready. I asked the planner why the decorations weren't to the sky up, and she told me she didn't like them. I had a boyfriend of another bridesmaid hang them up because I knew the bride would be upset if they weren't in the reception hall. We had spent hours the day before finishing them. Story 9. We had a guestzilla. Older aunt of the bride showed up wearing a white lace gown. Told the groom she didn't want him in the group picture because it was only for family. When the caterer put aside the top tier of the cake and put it in a box for the bride a groom to have on their first anniversary, she began to pick off and eat the icing with her fingers. Fudge you, Aunt Anne. Story 10. Oh, I have one. I used to work weddings in college. I worked one that was a complete nightmare. The bride and groom were from NYC and got married in the South. He was her boss at a Fox News show. When I first saw them, I legit thought he was her dad. The entire night she kept yelling at him, telling him to leave conversations she was having with her friends. She was just awful to him. Not to mention their wedding colors were pink and green. And I mean bright pink. They paid thousands of dollars to have a pink tented ceiling. And their bridesmaid dresses were these ugly, hot, pink designer dresses. I think each one cost $900. This wedding all around was between $300, $350,000 at least. They had a man in a jet pack dressed in a tux fly over the reception, land to a string quartet playing the James Bond theme song and took a sip of a martini. That cost like $1.13K. He was a pretty interesting guy, if you can imagine. I sometimes wonder if the couple is still together. I'm assuming not. Story 11. The wedding planner at my wedding was hilarious to us, though she probably didn't find it so funny. Cow kept going wrong. The cake was the wrong color. The bridal suite was out of commission because the air conditioning was broken. The replacement cabin they gave us was infested with mosquitoes. The officiant was late, and then at the ceremony said the wrong names, etc. To top it off, it was her second wedding employed at the venue, and the lady at the front desk told us the one the week before was insane. But I didn't give a cow. My husband was pretty upset about the name, but that was it. We still had cake. We ended up with an even more private cabin. The citronella worked pretty well everywhere, but the hot tub, it was fine. Every time she had to break something to us, you could see her take a deep breath and center herself, and then get confused as hell when we were fine. I really want to hear the stories from the previous week's wedding. Story 12. Some highlights. Please arrive 15, 30 minutes early. Please do not wear white cream or ivory. Please do not wear anything other than a basic bob or ponytail. Please do not have a full face of makeup. Do not record during the ceremony. Do not check in on Facebook until instructed. Do not talk to the bride at all. Everyone will toast with Raimi. No acceptance. Lastly must come with gift $75 or more or you won't be admitted. Story 13. I have a friend who is a wedding planner for a resort. She says the thing is, everyone gets married. The poor people, the pushovers, the demanding, the ones with three stepdads. Family dynamics suck, and no one has ever been a perfect family. Also, people steal the gifts card box more than comfortable. Story 14. I planned my own wedding. And surprisingly, one of my best friends since high school, who was a bridesmaid, was the worst. 
At my rehearsal dinner and the day of my wedding, she spent a majority of the time complaining to my other bridesmaids that her foot hurt and that she wasn't involved enough. I gave everyone simple tasks, and they were evenly distributed. Didn't ask too much or too little of any one person. Later, she told me she thought that it was too all about me, which it really wasn't. Oh, and it was my wedding day, so it very well could have been. She was just whining a lot. Story 15. My friend is an events coordinator, one of the few privileged to host at a fancy, remote Californian resort. It takes celebrities for two, three K per night, but doesn't have any big party spaces. Events are held in the fields and rich folk enjoy the rustic vibe. This reception was to be held in July on a Sunday in the parking lot. My friend orders rolls of artificial turf grass to cover the asphalt. The bride gets buyer's remorse and cancels the turf a couple weeks before the wedding. Wedding day, she comes to friend fuming, this is an actual parking lot with lines and everything. The first few PPL friend called to the sky up on her. Finally, someone quotes her an absurd price to load up all of their rolls of real turf grass, drive the HR to the resort, and set it up. Friend doubles the price she quotes the bride. Bride doesn't bat an eye. And that is how I got paid $20 HR to intermittently water turf grass in a parking lot. Story 16. I posted the full, which is a saga, but it certainly was a popular read. The version is a couple I knew from HA are getting hitched, and I had no warning his mom was crazy. She rolls up to rehearsal late and proceeds to be inappropriate at dinner, and I have to escort her out. Couple is naive and had no idea what was coming. Next day, she cancels most of the guests and catering, then eventually assaults Bride's dad who was dying of cancer. Cops got called and the venue tried to sue me over it. Story 17. I do wedding planning on the side and offered to help a friend like three days ago. They've been engaged. A month-ish now? Wedding is in a year. I literally just had a pretty invasive surgery like five hours ago and this chick sends a you okay text. And as I'm typing my response, starts prattling on about what she wants to do for her wedding plans in a year. My recovery isn't expected to be long, but like, and I know it's exciting and all, but at least wait until I respond? What if I'd like passed away and my husband was like, yep, she dead sucks to suck. JFC. I'm gonna need lots of Xanax this time around, I can already tell. Story 18. I know a woman who was a caretaker for a public park that also had a wedding venue. They had a variety of stories, but the craziest was where the groom got up on stage, ripped off his shirt to reveal his white supremacy tattoos, shouting, this is who I am, to the bride's family. They get in a fight, and one of the bride's family members pulls out a shotgun and marches the Nazi out to the parking lot. I don't know how many got arrested, but it was a... Story 19? Former DJ here. I messed up up two weddings out of 80. I think that was a good run. If the bride or groom is nervous as cow and demands things out of you with two minutes notice, you're going to have a bad time. People get real emotions during weddings. I've been yelled spit at. It's the worst when they get on the mic, or you can just tell that you're going to have a bad time. Usually when they are crying as they arrive, it's going to be a bad time. I was kicked out of one wedding as a DJ while trying to understand read three different song lists. I felt really bad. I started to panic as none matched up, and the groom added a fourth song list two minutes before the ceremony started. This was ten years ago. Still remember it. It was a second job. Story 20. A guy I know got married recently, and the bride's mum was the worst. Four six of the bridesmaids never spoke to the bride again, and two didn't even attend the wedding due to her behavior at the hen party. Micromanaged everything, was abusive and controlling throughout, and to make matters worse, she overcharged everyone for hotels, etc., so it would cover her costs. Story 21. What do you mean there's no pocket squares? You never ordered any. You've ruined my wedding. It's all stupid now. You need to be fired. D. No, you are going to stop crying because you're ruining your makeup and go get married. Seriously, if a little square of fabric is the be-all and end-all, you have much, much bigger problems. Story 22. Former wedding photographer. The last wedding I ever did, the bride had a huge zit on her forehead, which was just ruining everything. It was the end of the world. So, thinking I was being generous, I zapped it off in all of the photos in Photoshop. To a few weeks later after I delivered them, I get an irate phone call saying that she couldn't believe I would edit off a zit. She wanted to remember the day as it was, not how it should have been. So I went through and restored all the zits. Weddings are too emotionally fraught to mix with business. Story 23. I know it says wedding planners, but I'm going to admit something. I was definitely a bridezilla, although not as bad as some of these others, and our colors were purple and gold. So day before wedding, we get the deliveries to our A venue, and the napkins were the wrong shade of purple. I tore the delivery manager a new one, even though I knew it wasn't his fault. Needless to say, 
Not my proudest moment. Story 24. I worked as an assistant to a low-level celebrity. As his assistant, I was expected to get a wedding planner for free, a free venue, free everything, because as he put it, he was a celebrity and they'll want to give it to him free. I tried hard to find free, but cash is king, and nobody really knew who he was. I managed to get him free catering, free suit, and free bridesmaids' dresses. He got mad at me because I didn't get everything for free. I quit shortly after that. His demands and reality were very different. Story 25. Bride tried to have a 50K wedding on a 5K budget and do everything last minute. She didn't like her efficient and fired him the WK before wedding, and then didn't realize how difficult it was going to be to find one last minute. She ended up having to get married by a JP the day before wedding, and had a friend officiate wedding and act like it was all real. The whole wedding was a joke, and people left by 8 p.m. after cake. The whole wedding was over by 10 p.m. Story 26. Not a wedding planner, but had a former high school best friend who had me help her plan both of her weddings as her maid of honor. Both times from out of state, mind you, as I was a military wife. First wedding, she marries this total weirdo she barely knows, basically because he made a lot of money selling cars. At the reception, the best man tells me he barely even knows the groom. She makes me stay up all night the night before decorating the venue with her. I have to pay to fly in as well as for my giant sparkly pink dress, the whole nine yards. Did I mention the groom decided he hated me at some point during the engagement? OMG, he was so rude to me. Her crickets, marriage lasts a year. Fast forward to second wedding, me still out of state. Her still expecting me to help her plan. I get to town, and it turns out she has asked another friend of hers who has hated me since high school to also be her maid of honor because she got mad at me while planning. Then her husband, to be said the other friend, couldn't be her maid of honor because she was too active and he didn't want a woman like that standing up for them in front of God. So she resorted back to me, without ever telling me I had lost the title or the other friend she had either. So at rehearsal, other friend finds out she's been demoted and loses her cow because she didn't even get to be in the car salesman wedding, also because he thought she was too slutty. How did these husbands even know about this woman's close relationship life? Bride was a big fan of telling her friends personal stuff in attempts to make herself look more appealing. Looking back, I'm sure there was lots of fun stuff said about me behind my back as well, just like every other female in her life, just how she was. Anyway, when other maid of honor confronted Bride, asking why she lied to her about being maid of honor, Bride accused her of being selfish and not thinking of her on her second big day and started crying. Guilt's other maid of honor into staying in wedding. Next day, other maid of honor, now just a bridesmaid who was a single mom, Box at paying three figures for hair and makeup. Bridezilla is back, showing no empathy and shrugging and saying that's what she signed up for. The best part? When I got married, second marriage but only wedding I've had as first marriage was a courthouse special, she didn't show up. She didn't want to miss a local vacation with her new husband's boring family. We aren't friends anymore, not sadly. Sometimes having history with people doesn't make it worth dealing with their cow, and weddings have a good way of bringing that out. Story 27. I've catered to functions, but one time we got a wedding reception where the groom and his pack of guys turned up stinking drunk already and spent the whole time harassing the staff. The bride didn't look happy. They brought a bunch of children but hadn't planned on how to cater for them, and I later learned some of the kids hadn't eaten all day because their parents were busy, so they were tired and crying. The party wasted loads of food because they clearly hadn't got each guest's options right. Meat, fish, veg, three courses and left a huge mess, as well as used candy needles in our men's toilet. Story 28. I've been bridesmaid at four weddings, and this particular one was going to be my fifth time being in the wedding party, but my first time as a maid of honor. I am so glad it didn't happen. I'm just going to mention the major bits. It's been years since it happened, so some of the details are mushy. She and I had been close friends since college, and she and her fiancé had been high school sweethearts. He was a trust fund baby, and she had absent parents. He finally popped the question close to their 10-year anniversary, and within a couple of weeks, she had assembled her bridal party. I was deeply touched that she wanted me to be her MOH, and I accepted her request. I was in charge of the general wrangling duties that come with being the MOH. Things started out incredibly fun, and I enjoyed helping her out. But as the date got closer and closer, she descended into the pit and arose a full-fledged bridezilla. I ended up having to hunt around a ton of the Los Angeles bridal shops to track down the exact bridal outfit for her. She wanted a particular dress with a specific shape 
construction, bust line, fabric, color, and she wanted some super specific accessories to go with it. She would leave me messages saying that I had to go to specific shops on specific days and would get annoyed when I placed my job priorities ahead of her wedding details. She is vegan, and I mean heavily vegan. The menu eventually changed into one that had no options for non-vegans, despite the majority of the guests being omnivores. Whenever I'd bring it up to her, she'd reply with, Well, they should know better because it's my wedding. They don't have to eat if they don't like it. The wedding was to take place at a gorgeous retreat in the mountains just outside of L.A. She was so hell-bent on it that they put down a hefty non-refundable deposit right away. Since it was up in the mountains, I knew that we wouldn't have easy access to non-vegan establishments should we get hungry. And my partner especially is a carnivore. Bride had planned on the wedding party staying in a cabin house that they were going to rent for the occasion so I figured it wouldn't hurt to ask if we could bring our own food to make. When I ran this by her, she abruptly told me, Fudge, no, you can't bring that cow inside my cabin. You better find a way to take the microwave and nuke that cow outside, because no flipping way am I going to let the cabin smell like meat. At that point, I was so ready to be done. They had a trip to some hipster music festival coming up, so I made up my mind to use that time away from her to come up with a good way to remove myself from the situation. No need for that, as it turns out. They came back from the trip with their engagement dissolved. Apparently, they came to the realization that they didn't really love each other and that it was just a relationship of convenience. Felt a little bad, but at the same time relieved. Don't know who broached it first, but I have my guesses. She promptly moved out of his house and ended up losing all her financial support. She seemed shocked at this result. This was how I found out that he and his parents were basically bankrolling her. Yowza, our friendship kept rolling downhill from there. She kept morphing into some other girl that wasn't the girl I became friends with. Story 29. My husband was a wedding photographer for many years, so he has seen some doozies. The one I remember him telling me that the bride hated her mother, I don't know reasons, wasn't going to invite her to the wedding, but was coerced into it by others in the family. Comes the wedding day my hubs is taking at home pics before leaving for the church. Bride pulls him aside and says, I do not want any pictures of my mother taken today, none at all. If you set up family shots and she is there, just let the flash off do not take her picture. My hubs couldn't bring himself to do it and took all the pictures and figured the bride could tear them up if she wanted later.